Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Akanksha Mishra and this is Scientifics where I'll be taking you through this week's top science news from across the world. Let us start with our first story. It's an inspiring study by Australian and US scientists who found that around 215 million hectares of land around the world has the potential to naturally regrow into forests, which could sequester 23.4 gigaton of carbon over the next 30 years. In a study published in Nature on 30th October, the authors identified degraded land that can naturally regrow into forests by looking at factors such as its proximity to existing forest land, soil quality and population density. They explain how tree planting and afforestation is a difficult and expensive process which might not even get as many biodiversity returns as natural forests do. And using systematic models, there's a huge opportunity to just let degraded land be taken over by natural forests through natural processes. The scientists even made a map of the globe which showcases the regions where they found this process to be viable. Next up, we have a new study that found striking similarity between the current scenario of global warming and the last time that the world experienced an ice age. In a study in Nature Communications that was published on October 27th, scientists from Norway and Germany analyzed conditions in the Arctic region and the Atlantic Ocean currents right before the last ice age, which occurred about 115,000 years ago. Now, these two phenomena are significant markers of the world's overall temperature even now. What the scientists found from data about the last ice age in the world is that before the ice age started, there was intense warming of the world's temperatures, which led to the melting of the Arctic ice. This melted ice then led to an imbalance in the Nordic Ocean currents, which in turn affected the Atlantic Ocean currents, which eventually led to the loss of heat in the entire Northern Hemisphere thus the ice age. Now the interesting and scary part is that in the present day, scientists have warned that the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, AMOC, which is a system of ocean currents that regulates global temperatures, will collapse by the end of this century if human-induced global warming does not reduce. Comparing the last ice age to the present day, Scientists said that it's a case study on what happens when pre-industrial level of global warming occurs on Earth and how water, ice and the climate interact in complex and often unpredictable ways. Now let's move on to the next story. We have scientists from Penn State University in the US who have discovered a new protein called LAND-D, which has an interesting feature. It can distinguish between rare earth elements and help separate them for functional usage. A paper in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences Journal, published on 28th October, talks about the group of scientists that discovered the special binding site in this protein, and they used its ability to highlight and separate neodymium and praseodymium, which are essential rare earth minerals used in technologies like smartphones. Since the current rare earth mining process is very resource-heavy and brute force-oriented, This new discovery could lead to a major optimization in rare earth mining, not to mention also make it sustainable. Now for our final story. For the first time ever, a study by Chinese researchers who were able to reverse type 1 diabetes in a patient by reprogramming her own stem cells to produce insulin. This is groundbreaking for diabetes treatment, as the paper that's published in the Cell Journal on October 31st shows. The print had first covered the story when the scientists had published their findings a month ago. Now, a year into the medical process, they have come out with a one-year report of their groundbreaking treatment. The scientists took the patient's own pluripotent stem cells, which are cells that can be transformed into any other cell in the body, to a lab. In the lab, they chemically reprogrammed the cells to perform as islet cells. These are pancreatic cells that are responsible for producing insulin and regulating the blood sugar in our body. These reprogrammed cells were then transplanted back into the patient's body. And within 75 days, she maintained insulin independence. By four months, her glucose levels had stabilized, which indicates huge progress for diabetes treatment methods and stem cell therapy globally. That's all we have for today. Thank you for watching. Follow the print for more such news and updates.